All right, so everything's ready to go out here, huh? We think? It's TV news in the rough. I'll give you a 30 seconds to go. Future broadcast journalists at BGSU. Sure, bring up audio. Learning the lessons of TV news, the easy ones. And the presidential candidate hit the road. And the hard ones. And that 27 year old. <laughs> <laughs> and there will be more hard lessons to learn. Get him off of me! I don't want to be filmed. The media has a responsibility. Man, get them out here, man. This ain't no joke, man. We know what happened. Did you see it coming? We know there's blood. I have no idea what happened. We don't need to see it. People started running, and I'm standing next to a telephone pole, and I got hit. That camera blurring at him, you're just ruining everything we're trying to do. Yeah, it's depressing. All the news seems to be bad. Uh, Leach Street tonight is the murder trial of Jamie Madrigal. TV news is everywhere these days. It's a, a case that caught the attention of an entire community. Everywhere there's a TV, there's a critic. Stand by. What is it about TV news that we love to hate? We have certain expectations of television, and then we have another expectation of news, which is to report facts, to not be biased, well, it's to be fair. And I believe that we're, we're somewhat more critical of television news because we don't find it doing that. When do the American people rise up and say, forget the media in America, we're going to make up our minds, you're not going to make up our minds. The 1960s and the JFK assassination brought home the power and drama of television news. Even the shooting of Lee Harvey Oswald was broadcast into our living rooms. Then came the Vietnam War, evoking powerful images and provoking the powerful critics. In the United States today, we have more than our share of the nattering nabobs of negativism. TV news soon became an influential broker of public opinion, but now it's the public opinion of TV news that's at stake. A recent survey from the Pew Research Center shows believability of the major networks rapidly declining in just two years. The same survey shows a massive loss of viewership in the same period. Less than half of all Americans regularly watch network television news. What is the public really, I mean, what do they want from it? I mean, there's always criticism, but what do we want? You're guilty. Good morning, guilty. Bores me. <laughs> it bores you? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> all the news seems to be bad, so I don't know. I'd rather watch sports or some comedy show instead. <laughs> I really don't watch much news, it's depressing. No offense. <laughs> but I did not, could not, and would not have committed this uh, crime. It was the trial of the century. Can you just stay on the line? I don't want to stay on the line. He's going to beat the <laughs> shit. Wait a minute. For O.J. Simpson. Mr. Simpson, do you understand the charges that I've read them to you? Yes. yes. And for TV news. But you've got a telephone, so just to back off. He's still alive, but he's got a gun to his head. But only TV news was found guilty. O.J on a charge of sensationalism. Yeah, right. I think, number one, we can say, yes, we're going to be more cynical, we're going to be even more critical of the news. The most common charge is that crime stories especially ah! are overplayed, sensationalized by hype and sheer volume. We had uh, three people in the rubby in this pile. The Oklahoma City bombing, the Unabomber. We're looking for survivors right now. We're hoping for the best and the explosion of TWA Flight 800. So many stories that network news coverage of crime has soared 10 times from what it was just a few years ago. And the TV crime wave dominates all other types of stories at the network and local levels, at a time when the American crime rate is down. Are we obsessed or pandering? The victim did nothing except drive into South Central Los Angeles. In some news markets, the motto is, if it bleeds, it leads. They want to get to a story first. They want to show that they're first. We want to update you now on the standoff in South Toledo. As we reported live earlier, dozens of police officers surrounded a south side neighborhood. This well, sometimes uh, we go to these situations and the media's out there and they're, they're re really, you know, got the satellite dishes up and covering everything. Recently in Toledo, after a man was shot by police, he was believed to be armed and holed up in his house. Police were there. And so were the TV cameras. Right now, it appears to be coming to an end. And then it turns out to be maybe uh, the suspect just walks out of the house and surrenders after all the hoopla. And, and uh, it's almost like the media seems a little disappointed that it's not a bigger story. 
But in this case, the story ended tragically. I just talked to Toledo Police Chief Gerald Galvin. He tells me that Nate Stewart is dead. Jerry? TV news, TV news reporters um, purport to tell you information, and sometimes it's not that nice, and sometimes it's not all um, that pretty. And that ugly picture of life does not always play well with the viewers. We're sitting down there, and you might see some gory stuff. They have a tendency to show the blood, you know? We don't need that. Uh, when traumatic things are covered, I hate it that a lot of the details are there. I know that draws customers, but it seems like it's not respectable. Police tell us they will most likely have to use dental records to identify this badly decomposed body. Now, the respectable or not, crime stories, according to another recent survey, are still by far the most popular stories among viewers.